Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A'udzu billahi minasyaitonir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wassalatu wassalamu ala khatamil anbiya'i mursalin Muhammadin sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alhamdulillah we are almost ending the first day after some wrestling almost falling down the cliff. All right. Alhamdulillah after sunset viewing after um, alhamdulillah hopefully a, a dinner which you have enjoyed yeah and and it is this is actually the most important part of your retreat isn't it true what you are able to inshallah gain from this all right so it is it is important alhamdulillah that allah has invited all of us and jazakumullah khair for, for sacrificing not just your weekend perhaps your mondays and tuesdays out of your busy schedule to to join us so hopefully you you are going to learn something inshallah um in order for all of us to be more prepared to face Allah in the hereafter now um it is important to understand about the the topic for today yeah which is about how how not when yet yeah, how the deen was completed yeah um alhamdulillah we, we we should and we must be extremely privileged to be chosen by Allah to be the ummah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who has been the only ummah right that somehow or other allah has chosen for the deen to be completed right and we're going to talk about why yeah uh, we are in that such such a position um so don't forget brothers we are still in the first standards of zulhijjah as i was saying to you on me at my um uh whatsapp chat group yeah um Farid, you were there on my lesson on friday didn't you friday at the aicc mosque were you there no. you were not there no. right if you were to see gold is raining gold not water what would you do rain gold yes so that means you you would you would put in the effort yeah isn't it true yeah you would take what you can get to ensure that you get as many gold as possible yeah right ricky what would you do Uh, this real goal. Well, yeah, I need to read my mind then. <laughs> you know, if it's of use to me of any description, yes, uh, I would take it. If there's something more valuable than so, it. so all of us wouldn't just, uh, alhamdulillah, the seat is neutral and just sit down and look at the thing, take take pictures, take selfies, and all this is because running goal. What's happening today, as in the first ten days of Zulhijjah, is even better than goal, isn't it true? in terms of the fact that it's not enough for you and me to just sit down and just oh, alhamdulillah we are the first and the solution without putting in the effort to know about what are the things that we can do in the first ten days of zulhijjah yeah because subhanallah brothers and i say this especially to myself that the deeds that are done in this ten days of zulhijjah even more beloved to all and even jihad and on the day of judgment and all of us will face allah and if we are not prepared to face allah and all of us know about this simple hadith that all of us will not enter jannah on the basis of our salah of our fasting but we will only enter jannah upon allah's mercy and the the way to get allah's mercy is of course right to to be in his good books to obtain his love right and this 10 days of zulhijjah has been granted to all of us right so that all of us are able to reap the full benefits Alhamdulillah I'm sure you know right uh, those people who are even better than us in terms of being selected by Allah is now where they are, are they now in Mecca right and you know for example Ricky right you've been to Hajj before right that that moment that feeling right that the subhanallah is difficult to explain to them isn't it what is Hajj you can put in theory and words but unless you go there that feeling is unexplainable for those of you who alhamdulillah have been to umrah right 
that feeling of seeing Kaaba for the first time and looking at the Kaaba, that it cannot be described in words that you uh, look at the video or the YouTube. Agreed, right? Right. You went there in Hamla, selected by Allah to be there in Ramadan, right? Uh, same thing as Brian, right? Last ten days of Ramadan. You did not. You he was there, right? Yes, right. So, and and that feeling to be there. What is the hadith of the doing Hajj in the last ten days of first last ten days of um, of Ramadan? So equivalent to, to I think it was Hajj with the Prophet. Right, Hajj with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That it's up to Allah to give whatever things that Allah wants to those whom He wills. So today, right in this tennis of the Hajj, we are in day number six, I think, or seven. Right, Tuesday is the ninth for sure, inshallah. Right, so today must be the. We are yeah, the seventh. So 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 now after Maghrib is the seventh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So can you imagine how much time flies that that some of us may not have been doing enough to get that equivalent reward, even much better than gold that we should describe just now. And and Subhanallah, we do need to make the effort, inshallah. All right. How many of us are actually while we were walking or running that we we do the takbir, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi <coughs> Right? And this is, has been prescribed to us. All the Sahaba, all the Tabi'in has been saying all this. Right? At all times. So what, what, what is this takbir called in Britain? Yes, al-mutlaq. Right? Sooner or later, inshallah, on the 9th, on the Tuesday, on our, our last day here, after Fajr prayer, we're going to start with takbir al-muqayyad. Which means a uh, uh, specified or uh, done takbir done a specified time, which is after the, the obligatory prayers. Yeah, so it is important that we 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 really, alhamdulillah, are grateful to Allah that at least alhamdulillah, no matter how badly we are doing financially in our love life in many things, but at least all of us have been selected by Allah to be Muslims. Great. Right, Radek, how was your life? What what would your life be if you were not Muslim? How many years have you been to Shahada? Uh, coming to ten. So. Oh, Subhanallah. So, what did you? Th what would you think your life would be without Islam? Uh, I start to think actually. And this is unimaginable, isn't it true? Yes. And because Subhanallah, and this is something which we do. We do need to really uh, be more grateful to Allah. Right that Allah has selected us to be Muslims. I think the, the, the babyest of the reverts is, of course, Brother Kestas, right? Who just took Shahada three weeks, four weeks ago? The beginning of the... Yes, right? After a journey, right? Even all of us were talking to him, and he, Ricky, he really believed in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He believed in Allah. But Alhamdulillah, he, start, he, he didn't want to take shahada, right? Until he's so convinced. And um, he was basically a Muslim before he took shahada anyway. He was doing his prayers and all this. He was doing his fasting. Yeah? And, and subhanAllah, and this is the huge ni'mah from Allah, right? Allah said in surah number 14, verse number 34, He gave you all that you ask of him, and if you are to count the blessings of Allah, we will never count them. We will not be able to count them. Indeed, mankind is um, a wrongdoer and ungrateful to Allah. Right? And the biggest blessing of Allah give, that Allah has given us is Islam. Surely, right? Nothing can be comparable to Islam. Ricky, I think you are the oldest babies in terms of reverts, right? Twenty? No. No. How many? Thirty. Sorry. Twelve. Okay, so ten years. Eleven years. Twelve years. Yes. Yes. I think you're the, you're oldest, right? I think in terms of being a revert, right? Can you imagine? Your life, and you you suffered a lot, surely among everybody in front of me here in terms of the way that how your families uh, treated you. That's true. Right. 
Yeah. And the test that you face even today surely is worth everything that you have sacrificed. To answer your question, um, the same one if you're asking me, Adradik, what would your life be? Mm. Um, it's not worth having a life without this life, is my answer. Yeah. Because uh -huh. whatever happens, however we go, um, for those of you know, who, who don't know me, is every sacrifice, every test we go through is worth it. At the time, you may think that it isn't, but when the jigsaw comes together, and what we're waiting for is the ultimate price, then we know what that is. So this will be nothing compared yeah. to what sacrifices we're making now. Yeah. So, through it, as, and you have heard my talks before when I say, right, um, even the test that I went through, it, it was really horrible. But without that test, I wouldn't be sitting talking to you in terms of the fact that that made me who I am now, alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. And as you said, Ricky, and you rightly said, and that test that you, 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 you went through, subhanallah, you, you wouldn't be as strong a Muslim that you were if not for that test. And all of us are facing different tests all the time. Yeah? And this is something you do need to really um, understand that Allah tested you not because Allah doesn't love you. In fact, Allah loves you more than other people. That Allah put you into such a test for you and I to really look back at our lives and be grateful to Allah. At that time, of course, when the test came, it's not, you know, it, you never thought that how to get how to get up from this mess or how to pick up the pieces that you have suffered right but now after years then you understand why did Allah test and this is quite important because so don't ever think that oh every I'm tested like this I'm tested like that and 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 because at the end of the day right who was tested the most Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam especially right and followed by the companions of course right and of course other prophets have tested so much right and this is something in which alhamdulillah um, right, and written, right, of course, right, when you came back, you went back to Albania, right, everybody was making fun of you, right, because because you're trying to be practicing Muslim, of all your family members, alhamdulillah, and if so, that, that journey that we face, brothers, is not just specifically to the reverts, it's also specific to people like, who uh, were born as Muslims, because we, all of us are, are undergoing a, a, a kind of journey, right, that, that surely, right, that we have to really understand there is a reason why sometimes Allah do not want to give us what we wish for. Hold on, are you going to see on the chat thing? No, I'm going to I'm not going to lose my 300 pounds uh, deposit for this. <laughs> Look at this, uh, okay, uh, like we talk about the off camera. <laughs> Where was that? Before we came in? It's, it's like Britain, yeah, yeah so, so in a sense, that don't, don't ever think that um, Allah doesn't love us when we are tested a lot, right? And this is something in which all of us as a true believer will have to un undergo through different tests, right? Um, for those who are still studying, don't worry, your test will come, inshallah. And, and it is something you, you do need to prepare yourself, right? Um, that the test will come, right? And doesn't mean that Allah doesn't love you, right? In fact, Allah loves you much more that Allah will want to put you to a test. Allah always said in the Quran, um, wa sabri wa sala wa inna, uh, 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 inna Allah Surah number 2, verse number 153. Seek help in patience and in salah truly Allah is with the patient yeah so all of us are undergoing through a journey right and this is where we do need to be in a group like this inshallah to help to motivate one another to help to inshallah to um, make sure that you remind one another when you are down 
Yeah. Um, not everybody, insyaAllah, will be down all the time. Sometimes you are up, sometimes you are down. And, and subhanAllah, this is something in which all of us are always going through in our life. Yeah. But the most important thing that all of us must be privileged, all right, is the fact that Allah has completed the deen. Allah has completed the deen. Now, so in order to understand this, this momentous occasion, all of us must understand what the word deen means. Right? Do you, do you understand uh, what the deen means? Okay, this is just part of it. Right? Anybody has anything? Sufficient, Sufficient obedience. Yeah. Sorry? A way of life. All right? Um, so the, the true meaning of deen, it must encompass four elements. First element, there must be a subjugator, a sovereign one whom all of us are truly fearful of and all of us must be obedient to. Agreed? There must be one who is Allah. Secondly, there must be, he must have made rules and regulations for all of us to submit. Whether we understand or don't understand, that's why we need to make dua to Allah to guide us to understand. Agreed? Right? And because the Iblis understood why he need to bow down to Adam? No, he didn't understand. But the point is that the command was made directly by Allah. And this is complete failure um, by Iblis who was formerly so pious that he was actually elevated to the level of a guardian of paradise. Yep. And so much so that you and I know, right? The more a true believer we are, the more we'll be tested by Allah. Agreed? Right? And, and therefore, um, Iblis completely misunderstood um, in the sense that, that when Allah said <coughs> to, to, to do something, submission must be absolutely complete without any hesitation, without 50% or 70%, it must be 100% complete submission to Allah, right? And this is important that, that we, we truly understand yep, the, uh, the second part of the meaning of deen, it is that rules and regulations, well, which is Sharia law, of course, that, that we have to be completely in submission to, right? Thirdly, for it to be a deen, there must be complete obedience, right? Complete submission to what Allah has ordered us to do. It is not up to you and me to question our Creator why He made such a law, for example, in terms of um, the woman inheritance, they are supposed to be receiving less than the uh, male in the family, right? It is up to Allah to make this, um, and of course Allah has his own wisdom, right? So I repeat one more time, there must be a subjugator, there must be laws by the subjugator, there must be obedience. Last one, which is even more important, accountability. That means, i.e., whether you obey or not, you can, are we given a freedom of choice? Yes. In fact, Allah said, La ikra There's no compassion in religion, but there will always be accountability in the hereafter. You can do whatever you want in this life, right? And this is when you will be getting your fair share of um, response or reward or punishment according to what you are capable of or doing in this life. But right? it's absolutely important for us to understand this. Yeah. That's why. What is the last verse that was revealed in the Quran? So, you the no. Day, be so, yes. We should raise this again. Two and one. Two and one. What taqo yawman turjauna fihi ila Allah thumma tuwafa kullu nafsi ma kasabat wa hum la yuplamun. Be afraid of the day when you shall be brought back to Allah. This is the last verse that was revealed. Then every person shall be paid for paid for what he has earned, and they shall not be dealt with unjustly. Be careful, right? That's why even Umar ibn Khattab who was said, "Hasibu anfusam qabla qabla hasabu," which means 
keep yourself into account before you're asked to be kept into account, right? And this is important because we have every single thing that we do in terms of your work, yeah? So, for example, if you're a builder, right? Um, if you are not builder, right? <laughs> the thing is, uh, what happens here, if somebody says something, right, it sticks. These guys, where's El Mico? Yeah, he's <laughs> oh, yeah. He's accused me of being a porter that carries dead bodies around in the hospital. <laughs> because of your, because your thing, the last, last, last... Uh... You know what, it was all about context, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Just a few of you guys, it was such a nice event. Yes. This lovely lady of the house came, well, and she was well, going well. around for all the Muslim brothers, <laughs> and they were saying that, what do you do? She was, she was actually interrogating you guys, yes. and I picked it up, right? Yeah. So she was going, oh, these guys just like some of Timmy, someone like this, someone like that. And she came to me and said, what do you do? Because you don't want to know about me. <laughs> <laughs> so those of you who get to know me in this retreat, you don't want to know me. I'm terrible. I said, I carry dead bodies around in the hospital, and I'm a porter of dead bodies. She got up and walked out of the house. <laughs> I'm really glad. End the conversation. Guy, these guys, they, they could be the porter. They're the porter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm having to take a problem. I know it's you. <laughs> now, now, accountability, whatever it is, Elmi's dad is a builder, right? <laughs> If, if if the dad was paid an amount of money to complete, for example, this room, right? For sure, if there is a, a fault, and of course, Britain, you right, you you work as a builder before, right? Um, there is accountability. So accountability is not just about salah, fasting, but the things that you do in this life, right? If you are paid money to to complete this job. Of refurbishing this room, for example, right? It must be done as best as you can, inshallah, right? Without not hiding all these uh, crack marks and all this, it must be completely done in the best of manner. Agreed? Right? I'm a solicitor, right? If somebody paid me money to handle the client, the, the, the job, and all this, you, I must completely, at my best of ability, do the best as I can. And this is about accountability. That is why a lot of people, they, they, they you are sell, you have you have all these shops, right? If you put, if you sell things which is less than it is, instead of putting your bubble tea to the full, you give me only three quarters. You be accountable. True, mm -hmm. right? Which which nation was this? Were accountable for cheating and lying? Mm -hmm. No, no. <laughs> no. What what did you say? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> no, no. Which nations? Which which prophet? Shuaib. Is it true? The nations of Madia and they cheat and lie, right? And this is this is uh, if history always repeats itself. Said to said to say this, we talk we talk so many times, and oh, and oh, and in a very embarrassing manner, right? What is that? What happened? What happened? <laughs> Okay, okay. Anyway, you know, you know, right? Now, what was that? Okay, accountability. Yeah, so, and this is. Yeah, weights and measures. Yeah, and this is important that history always repeats itself. Right? And I hate to say this, and I will say this, right? The, the places in which you will find very fearful that you will be cheated are always in Muslim countries, always. In the markets, in terms of Morocco, in terms of Turkey, and this is how it is, and which is quite sad. Whereas Islam is supposed that fairness and justice is, is the, the crucial mental of how Islam is supposed to be, right? But it, it has been reduced to such a way that, you know, have you, been, have you been to Morocco? Right, the markets in Marrakesh, for example, right? It's, it's sad, right? Turkey. Sorry? Turkey. Yeah, somebody just put a monkey on my shoulder. <laughs> okay, give me 10 US. Just like that. I didn't even ask for the stupid monkey to be put on my shoulder, right? This happened to me, they had the snakes, yeah? Yeah. I was looking at the snakes. Yeah. And they, um, the guys, the old snake charming stuff, right? So I just called my friend, I was a look at this, yeah? And before I know it, he brought the snake right up here. Yes. And he's taking a photo, the other guy, 
or yeah. him bringing the snake towards me. Same thing, $20. Yeah. Yeah. I told him to F off. Yeah. I yeah. did. Yeah. And he was like swearing at me in his own lingo. Yeah, yeah. I said, how long have I got in love? Yeah, where was this? I mean, in Morocco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and you know, this is wrong, right? Because, yes. Um, I'm just going to say, bring it back to the um, scripture. I don't know the verse in the chapter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us that enter the deen with full heart. Yes. And everything fully committed. So don't if you don't want to enter fully hearted, don't bother. Hundred percent commitment and put your trust in the land into you. Yeah. That's that's the basis of the deen yes. Not easy, easy to say, but hard to do. You know why, Ricky? Because <clears throat> all we need to do is put in the effort. The results of it right in our hands, right? Whether it's successful or not, that's it, right? I'll make just look at the exam, alhamdulillah, may Allah make it easy for him in his results. But all they need to do is to put in the effort. The result is in Allah's hands, agreed? Sometimes you don't understand why after working so hard, I didn't get the results that I wanted to, wanted to achieve, right? And Allah gave us the answer in the Quran. What was Allah's answer? وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَقْرَوْ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُوا شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ أَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Which means perhaps the thing that you, you dislike is the thing which is good for you. The things in which you like is, is evil for you. Allah knows what you do not know. Perhaps Allah wanted, well, I, I raise up my hands. Right? I was a dentist. Everybody graduated after four years. I graduated after six years. Right, because I was so busy being the president of this, president of that. But if I don't, I wasn't involved in that. I don't have that qual leadership qualities that is required to or even organize this. Right. So that two years seemingly wasted when people are working as a dentist. Alhamdulillah, I take it in a good spirit that I was able to um, be a person who able to organize this. Alhamdulillah, try to work my best in terms because. Brothers, you cannot gain these things in anything. There is a time and place that you can gain these leadership qualities and to build up your, well, your social skills. Is it true? Right? It's only in terms of schools and building up. Well, if it's, of course, it's towards the non-Muslims and also, but still, it builds up of who you are. So don't be sad when things do not happen. There's always a reason why things happen. And I says, I said, one of the most important verses in the Quran that I come across is in Surah number 12, verse number 21. Right? In the last bit, I always say to my class, what is it? Wallahu ghalibun ala amri. Allah has a full power and control over all his affairs. Full control. Yeah? But most men do not know about this. And this is quite important. Right? And this also has to do with Tawheed and Shirk. Right? As we discussed before in our class in the um, AICC mosque, right? If, Ricky, if, if, if you were to help me financially, for example, if I were to face some financial problems, I cannot say to you, Ricky, because of you, right, I am in this state. It's complete shirk, right? I, of course, I say thank you for your help. But alhamdulillah, right, I'm now in this state. I, I praise Allah first. Whenever things happen, for example, in my clients, that they are successful in, in, uh, in the Alhamdulillah, in getting a visa in this country or whatever, I always say, even with the Muslims, I always say Alhamdulillah, or thank God you, you are able to stay in this country. I never, never um, say to them, it's because of me, my effort, my work, that you are in this country. That must never happen. So in terms of written and all this, that you are able to build nice, uh, rooms or nice buildings and all this. It's not from Allah. You're just part of the pieces that makes it work, but everything comes from Allah. And that is part of Tawheed, you must understand. If you are sick and you want to go to a doctor, right, and somehow or other, 20 doctors, the sickness are always remaining. That means you are not well. Then you come to Radek, for example, as a doctor, and suddenly, you Radik was able to cure you. You cannot tell him. Yeah, <laughs> amazing transformation <laughs> from <laughs> in in one night. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm 
So I cannot tell him, right? Oh, because of you, right? I'm better. It's not from Allah. It's just you, you are a means, alhamdulillah, to making me better. Right? And this is important. And it's about Tawheed. And all of us are, many people are not taking this seriously. Tawheed or committing shirk is not just about, oh, I, I believe he's the son of God. It's not just of that. Yeah? It's everything that we do. If we don't devote the success of an event is due to Allah, we have committed shirk. As simple as that. Yes, of course. Yes. And this is important, right? That that people are not realizing this. Yes. Got it? Sorry? It is, it is. Yeah. But but sometimes you are so grateful to somebody else that you, you think this is the he's the one or she's the one that that because of he or she that I'm I'm where I am today. I have heard it so many times, right? Because of my parents, that's why I'm here. How can it be? Didn't we make a covenant with, with our Rob? When? We discussed many times. When we were? Well, no? Before, before, before. Yeah, when, when, when Allah, Allah swiped the back of Adam salam in Surah number 7, verse number 172, right? And then Allah asked all of us, am I not your Rob? And we say, yes, Bala Shahidna, yes, we bear witness. And Allah warned us, don't say on a day of you're not aware of this. That means we devote ourselves even to our parents. Because of my parents, that's why I'm able to teach. It's not because of my parents. They help me. But it is from Allah. And we must understand this. If you don't understand this, surely you must go back to your Tawheed. And it's not a coincidence that Tawheed was revealed for 13 long years. In Mecca, only Tawheed. And this is something in which all of us must really look back and look at what we say. The things that we say sometimes is completely full of shirk. We don't realize it. Yeah? And this is, we, we do need to correct ourselves on many occasions, right? And don't say, oh, I, I'm able to go to Hajj because this travel agent, right? Because they are so, uh, you, I'm sure you heard it before, right? They, they, uh, they, uh, uh, they're able to arrange things so nicely. Because of them, I can go to Hajj. Complete nonsense, right? And all these kinds is seemingly small to you, but to Allah is huge. Where is our gratefulness to Allah? Surely, of course, you must thank the travel agent, right? But be, if not for Allah's invitation, you would not be even able to step in Masjid al-Haram. I'm going to share something with you guys. Um, just because of the and this is the opposite of shirk, yeah? So I'm not digging you up. Um, again, I go back, this is, you refer to me as being the oldest in this Maybe. Country, in that sense, yeah. So, just after I became Muslim, and I shared it earlier with you, we were here, I wouldn't go into the house because I was scared, and how the doors were brought off this house to make maximum space. What does that mean to me? What it meant to me was that I was still discovering this deed, and Allah puts people in your life, whether you like it or you don't. Some are good for you, others are not good for you. <clears throat> and when I came back from there, I didn't tell you this last time, but I'm going to declare it now. Came back from where? From your house. When I went okay. to your house for the first, second time, mm. I went up to the bathroom, straight up the stairs, remember? Mm. In the same house. And I looked and everything was there in the bathroom as, you know, and what I mean by that, it wasn't like a seat house where it's thick and span. It was a ways and means to get to life. And it, it, I don't know, how can I put it? Nothing really mattered. It wasn't if it, everything was neat and tidy. It was functional, right? Oh. So then when I looked at these doors and when I came back from that house on the first two, three times, you know, I, then I thought that Allah has put this man in my life to show me how temporary this life is. Because I've come from a Sikh background, I told you, where our house is thick and span, and they, you know, very, very house proud people. They have changed all that now, right? But it was shown to me, this is how you're supposed to live life. Life is temporary, number one. Number two, when you said to me, Ricky, you got a job in London. I was working in London at that time, what people call success, this and the other. And you said, you should go to Umrah. I said, why? And your answer was, have you got money around? Have you got health now? And I said, yes, you go now. I said, I'm not ready. You remember that? How can I be only been a few months, a few weeks, whatever? 
And he said, don't worry, come here and he will teach you how to do that. And I was terrified. And I was terrified. And when I went, and I'm not going to share the whole story with you, it'll take too long. All I remember is after doing the, I just never left my memory once. After doing that tawaf, as soon as I hit the, saw the cover for the first time, for me, I just stood there. I was frozen. And all I'm going to tell you guys is that I stood there like the, in the movies that everybody's going past me. Then afterward, these guys go, people are bumping into you. I didn't feel anybody bump into me. And my legs were jelly, I froze, and I was crying. And all I felt inside me, I've come back home. I know this place, yet I've never been there. They have no link to me from my childhood or from my cultural background, zero. How does that happen? And then when we did the tawaf, Sheikh took me to one side and he got the water, the zamzam water in a cup, and he took me to one side. He could see I've never been in a position where it's so hot. And he poured it on my head, literally. Why am I telling you this? The love comes through. And the deen, when we are reverts, we take the shahada, then there's an entry point, and then there's a maturity when the deen sits in your heart. There's a difference between that. Like our young brother has taken the shahada, alhamdulillah, it takes time. It's a journey. It's not simple. But what the shaykh was also saying, which is very important about the other parts, is the plan of Allah is perfect. You may have heard this terminology before, you may not have. We have the pixel. When we look at our life, we have a pixel. Allah has the whole picture. So we, if we, oh, this has gone wrong, this has gone wrong, this happened, that happened. That's the example you just gave now. Mm. If I was a dentist, if I wasn't this guy, mm. right? So you're looking at the pixel level. What do you know what's going on outside? He's in control of that. You follow? Mm. That's a very important element to remember. So when we're down and we feel, and we all go through that, and we call to him and times are tough, and we think it's really tough for us. Call on him because he has the picture and he'll get you through. Sometimes Allah just wants to bring you close to him. We might drift a little bit. He wants to hear your voice. Am I right, Sheikh? Yeah. So these things are very important. And sometimes you, he's going to put you to the most toughest thing that you've ever been through. Right? He's told us what he's going to test you with. But just keep going on that. Just keep going straight. Don't let people distract you. Just keep going. We're going to go through it, but it's temporary. Jazakallah khair. Adariki. Now, anybody want to add something? Right. So, so it is important that we actually look. Now, is it, it is important to do this thing called al muhasaba. Al muhasaba means keep ourselves into account, right? What we have achieved, what is our shortcomings, what we have, could do better. It's not just about going full speed ahead and do whatever things without looking 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 back at what the things that we could do better. Yeah. Um, alhamdulillah, like Brother Khalil, Alhamdulillah, your father took Shahada, your son took Shahada, Brother Joseph, you guys took Shahada, that son, young girl, son took Shahada in the Indonesian mosque, right? Everybody is on a different journey, right? And But, but uh, Alhamdulillah, that's how we are here together, right? To help each one another. You are helping me to, to put some more, a lot of inspiration into my life to understand. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of things that all of you are doing into my life that make me a much better person, alhamdulillah. And I'm truly grateful to Allah. And it's a pri privilege that I'm able to be associated with all of you here, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Now, so the import, so we understand about the deen now, right? Um, the meaning of the deen, right? The most important thing is when Allah said in Surah number 5, verse number 3, Al yawma akmaltu lakum dinakum wa atmamtu alakum ni'mati wa raditu lakum islam adina. This day I have perfected your religion for you. I've completed my favors upon you and I've chosen Islam as your way of life. That means Islam was complete. Right? Tell me, what do you understand by this? That means that anything that you try to um, think that it will benefit Islam or not, or any, any other way apart from the way that Allah has already shown to the Prophet. So, so like, right. And the Quran. That means it is complete and it's com complete, isn't it true? There, there isn't any new way yeah, to make it 
better in terms of to worship Allah, right? Example, we know that, uh, that one sahaba came, three people came to Prophet Muhammad and said, oh, I want to fast every day. Another person came to him and said, I want to pray every, the whole night. I don't want to sleep. Another one said, I don't want, I don't want to marry. I just want to focus on Islam. And, and he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? I fast some days and I don't fast. I pray and I sleep at night and I marry. Those who are not, do not follow me, is not one of me. So it doesn't mean that you're doing more things. You are a better person than Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is important, right? We have the best example in him, right? Allah said in the Quran many times, Ati Allah wa wa Rasul. Obey Allah and obey Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In fact, he said in the verse Surah number 33, verse number 31, Qul in kuntum Allah, wa yaqfalakum Allah wa ghafur rahim. Right? Say, O Muhammad to mankind, if you love Allah, then follow me. If you do so, Allah will love you and forgive you of your sins. And Allah is often forgiving the most merciful. Right? So this is very important that we understand this. Right? So Islam was completed how? Because Allah has preserved the Quran. Preserved. Tell me a single book that the Quran, that, 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 that the, any religious book or scriptures that, that it has been preserved. The Bible? No, everything has been altered, right? And again, this is how Allah uh, promised us, right? In Surah number 15, verse number 9, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra um, wa inna lahu lahafidun. Verily, we it is who have sent down the dhikr, the Quran, and that surely we shall guard it from corruptions. Right? Very important verse, right? That it is guarded and it is preserved until the day of judgment. You will never find any alterations or any changes in Allah's law. If Allah says no LGBT, no LGBT. If Allah's law says no LGBTQ plus, I don't know how many, how many, how many plus, 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 whatever it is, right? <laughs> and the flags change from this color to that design, that design. means nothing at all until the day of judgment. You cannot, for example, in a Christian faith, right? you have a gay priest, and you know you have this gay they're trying to make it uh, a gay marriage to be in the church and all this that and and all these kind of things if it's not supposed to be there it's not supposed to be there right you, allah's law will never change under their judgment and it's quite important how allah completed the deen yeah allah cannot say suddenly okay actually i changed my mind right men and women are supposed to get the same amount of money as inheritance right and this is completely nonsense yeah, because nowadays people are trying to be smart, right? This feminist movement, they would they'd say always that, oh, why should daughters get less than the, than the, than than the uh, sons? Yeah, in terms of inheritance. Yeah, so Quran was completed, and th this is how it is, and uh, how Allah has completed the deen. Yeah, it will never be corrupted, and it will never change. Secondly, of course, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has been sent to you and me. Yeah, in order to, to 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 make us understand about the deen. Yeah. So um so this is what I have to say, right? We have to understand the deen that Islam was completed, to be grateful to Allah, alhamdulillah, that we have a way of life which 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 all of us will inshallah lead us to Jannah. Right? As as crude or as insensitive as I may sound, yeah, if any one of us do not die as a Muslim. Is there any hope of entering paradise? Not at all. And of course, only Allah knows best. We do not know in the end, right? We know one of my students, she is a Lithuanian. Before she passed away, before, no, she, before her father passed away, she was in the hospital bed with him. And somehow or other, when she asked him to take shahada, his eyes was in tears. And he passed away. We do not know what what's happened. Only Allah knows best, right? It's not up to you and me to judge at the end of the day, right? But for sure, right? Allah reminded us, for example, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu taqulloha haqqa duqati wa la tamutuna illa wa antum muslimun. Or you truly believe, um, have taqwa to Allah as it is due and do not die except in the state of Islam. And this is what you hope for, isn't it true? Right? To be to be to to die in a state of Islam.
3 verse number 102. Yeah. Okay. We are very tired. Alhamdulillah. I hope today's event, right, um, are able to make all of us a little bit aware right, about what is required of us on these 10 days of Zulhijjah, all right? Our, how we pray together, alhamdulillah, yeah, our journey. Tomorrow, what is the waking up point? Two o'clock is not wake up, right? Two o'clock is the hajjit will begin, inshallah. Right? So everybody should try to wake up, inshallah, right? Two o'clock. Ready. Yes. Yeah, inshallah. Right? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before that, any questions? Yes. No. Who? Yes, yeah, up to you. Right? But if you have. Some of us have a. Yeah, sometimes you don't know what. People are wearing shoes and all this. Yes, they love animals. So, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think I think we should pray together for once right, or twice because then people like Joseph would know what is tahajjud is it true, right? Uh, very quickly, before we pray tahajjud, the sunnah is to pray two rakaah, a quick sunnah to start the tahajjud, right? And the tahajjud will begin, inshallah. Don't worry, we do a quick one, inshallah, right? Because fajr is about what time? I think about 2.40 around there, right? So we only got... Is it 3 o'clock? I'm not sure. What, when is Middle Kings? What time is Middle Kings? Okay, London is, uh, I was thinking about 2.42 or 2.39 or something like that yeah, for London, right? We're going to check, inshallah. 2.41. Here. In Il Ilfra Chrome. It's called Il 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 Ilfrakom, isn't it, from this place? Yeah, right? yeah. Okay, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala improve our iman and taqwa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those whom he choose to be among the dwellers of paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us our sins and shortcomings and grant all of Jannah to Firdaus. Subhanahu wa ta'ala shudu ala ila anta wa astaghfuqa wa atuwa subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil izzata ma yusifun wa asalamu ala mursalin wa alhamdulillah wa alamin assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh jazakum wa khair we see each other at 2 o'clock in the next few hours, inshallah. Salam.